Sorry. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me, and it's uh, I'm really honored to be able to be uh, be to give a seminar here. Uh, so and uh, so this Oracle uh, case. This is the first slide. This is the first slide, and uh, this is about the vector OFDM systems uh, for single antenna. Uh, so I'm the U with Delaware, you know, the Delaware, and uh, we are not too far away. So, okay, so let me briefly introduce the outline. First of all, I will talk about some background, some standards. So I'm sure most people know very well now here this part. And OFDM, most people will know, know OFDM as well, but I will briefly review this. Then mainly I will introduce back to OFDM systems for single antenna. And uh, well, if I have time, I will go through linear, you know, linear receivers. Uh, you can don't, you don't have to do maximum likelihood demodulation, which is a more complex. You could even do linear receivers, for example. Then uh, for multiple antenna systems, we could simply do this called the cyclic delayed velocity CDD with FDM for multiple antennas. Then I will conclude. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, just stop stop my stop me anytime. Okay. So uh, the, again, the first part is very, very, uh, very uh, basic. So uh, as you know that we have two kinds of uh, communication systems. One is wireless, one is wired, wireline. For example, computer, computer, computer communications and the cell phones, Wi-Fi, wireless. But both tra transmissions are through EM web propagation. And uh, this is the fundamental formula to, for the wave, right? You have the amplitude, you get the phase, both can, uh, and frequency, of course, both can share, carry information for, for transmission. And the channel, the media, is that the media that the wave uh, uh, carrying information propagates through. And then, unfortunately, this interestingly, this channel is approximately linear system. And uh, in a short time window, actually, it's approximately linear time invariant system, LTI system, which can be characterized by its frequency response. For example, this is a, if you take Fourier transform of the M domain uh, system, then you got the frequency spectrum here. So, for example, right? So, and for this particular, so for this frequency spectrum the channel, the channel response, frequency response, there are two, two, two types. The one, first one is that when this uh, spectrum is flat or approximately flat, it's basically the AW, additive wire gas noise channel, AWGN channel. Uh, if this spectrum is uh, not flat, then, then you got the inter-simple interference. So we're going to go more detailed math formulas, although simple, but more math, detailed math later, a little bit later. So two kinds of uh, uh, channels. And uh, for, for graduate students, the beginning graduate beginners, we, well, when we study digital communications, mostly we do study the AWGN channel, narrowband channel, AWGN channel. Okay. And for these two kinds of channels, clearly, you know, when, when uh, for broadband, if the bandwidth here is broad, so the flatness of this spectrum has, is less possible. It's not, it's, in fact, it's not possible to be flat if this bandwidth is very, very, very broad. So then you got into simple interference occurs, right? And both in wireless, wireless is multipath, wired also kind of multipath, but inside the table. Okay, still this, the channel is not flat in, in single interference, not ideal, non-ideal channel. Okay, uh, let's go back to the 25 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, 25 years ago, which was the, what was the big, biggest business in the 90s, which is called the computer modems, right? In computer modems are wired, this channel is fixed and also has high SNR signal to ratio. And we got all those uh, bit rates uh, corresponding to, to, to different uh, products on the market, modern product, computer modern. If you have only telephone line, then you can hook telephone line with your PC and uh, with the modern, right? So we, we, I, I think I bought all the modems here. And the, te uh, the, the thing I want to talk says here is that the major difference, the major progress here for uh, making the speed faster and faster is uh, basically two sides. One is transmission, one is receiving. The transmission actually improving the color trellis color modulation or bandwidth efficient modulation schemes. And from smaller dimension to higher dimension, right? You got to get a better and a better uh, transmission rate. 
at the receiving side from linear equalizer to a decision feedback equal nonlinear equalizer. So those techniques really made the, the products um, more and more and faster and faster. The key idea is to, here is to squeeze more bits uh, to a symbol, right? And uh, then, uh, because bandwidth, you want the bandwidth fixed, uh, because, you, you know, as I said, you know, the bandwidth fixed, then uh, what you could do is squeeze more bits, uh, you carry more, more, more bits for a symbol, then to improve the rates. However, if you keep one, still want to improve the rates further, you have to increase the bandwidth. In other words, you have to transmit faster. And um, unfortunately, when you transmit faster, the time domain equalization may have a problem for the traditional approach. So then people thought about, okay, let's do a web, basically WFDM, and which is a high speed, a high speed modem, right? So this is Telnet, this is the Ethernet, fast speed modem. Okay, and both uh, some big uh, laptops have uh, also have these two in interfaces, right? The here is that you use bandwidth, and uh, so we can see from both sides here. So here the example is that one, you know, the different rates with different wires at different distances, right? So what I want to say here is that the key progress for wireline modems is in physical layer is mainly dealing with inter-symbol interference. Okay, both wired and wireless. Uh, this is wine, wireline. Both, both high speed and, uh, and the tel telnet and ethernet are dealing with inter-symbol interference. Okay, so what happens to wireless? In wireless cases, the channel varies and fades. And, and they all, everyone shares the same channel, wireless is the channel, right? So the CSN cannot be too high. And you have, and, uh, okay, so you both are uh, auto and indoor. This indoor, for example, your Wi-Fi indoor, for, for example, cellular systems and the multi-path, multiple reflections, which cause the multi-path. So we, you know, okay. Okay, so the multi-path is here. So one, in case the band, one, the bandwidth is narrow enough, in other words, this is the, roughly what, what capital T is, is the time duration to trans for, to transmit a symbol. Okay, they're called symbol duration. And one over capital T is basically the run bandwidth. In other words, when the bandwidth is narrow, in other words, when this is small or capital T is large, all the multi-passes may, may comparing to capital T will be clustered. And you don't have, you don't have much inter symbol interference. For example, these two symbols may not interfere severely, okay? So in this case, actually, what in the more uh, narrow band case, in the narrow band case, you don't have a severe inter-symbol interference, or you don't have this inter-symbol interference. So when the bandwidth is uh, a little small, or the bandwidth is narrow, or narrow band case. On the other hand, in the wide band case, in the wide band case means that the one over T is large. Uh, in other words, one capital T is very small, small, then this basically is a dry stretch all the multipasses are stretched out. So in other words, the, the or different symbols will interfere each other, okay? So you got the inter-symbol interference in wide band case. This is called time spray, right? You got a wide time spray then which covers multiple, multiple uh, symbols. So in mathematically, you get this uh, formula. The X is the information you transmit, H of N is the multipass uh, channel, Reflections, then you suppose, let's say you got a capital L plus one, what it passes, and this is what you receive, the signal received, then you have added to noise. Okay, in practice, of course, H of N also have, have Doppler, they have Doppler spread or time varying. However, uh, okay, like in, in, in satellite communications, they, this day is a hard topic, right? So in practice, this um, channel coefficients may vary with China, with, with, with time, but in some cases, in most many cases, we can approximately approximately think about that this is uh, not time or slowly time varying comparing to the, you know, to the data rate, all right, or to the bandwidth. All right, so let's go back to the let's let's see the standards and uh, the number of power multipasses and the modulation methods in wireless applications in terms of the standards. So uh, everybody knows this standard, right? The first, this is the second is 2G. Uh, 2G, we got uh, IS95. We got, of course, we got a GMA, GSM, right? European GSM, and this is North America. So bandwidth, basically, is 1.2288 megahertz. 
In this case, actually almost optimal for a single pass or you can, you know, equivalent. Okay, in practice, of course, you cannot, you know, there are, there are small body passes, but uh, we can think about this case is uh, no intersymbol interference or not severe intersymbol interference for second generation. For, for to third, yes, 3G, both actually GSM, you know, is, is changing to, to CDMA system as well. So both standards are changing to CDMA system. In this case, actually, the bandwidth is around 11 megahertz. If we divide 11 by this number, you roughly get a two and a, a six and a eight multipasses or equivalent. In other words, in, uh, we compare it to first, second generation, the third generation, you got six to eight multipasses. And, um, and interestingly, we're going to see a little bit later, this is almost break point for, for CDM, to use CDM in, more, you know, in, in cellular systems. Okay, so then uh, similarly to the Wi-Fi systems, uh, which is similar to 2G3G, and the 11A has the 20 megahertz bandwidth, then you got the, if you divide the 20 by this uh, 1.2288 or 1.3, you roughly get 16 multipasses. Okay, and this case actually your OFDM adopted, is adopted. And uh, over here is, uh, you know, you got, you got more flexible here, uh, but still OFDM. All uh, right, so now from 3G to 4G or LTE, the bandwidth is 20 megahertz, similar to Wi Fi here. Then you got 16 multipasses and the equivalent. And the downlink is OFM, uplink is SC, single carrier from my equalizer because uplink of the bandwidth may be smaller, right? And uh, so, so then the single carrier from the equalizer is, 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 is used. And the 5G people, you know, you know that is around 100 megahertz or more even than the OF, the still OFDM adopted. And the 6G uh, is not determined, so what kind of modulation we're looking for, right? And uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so this is still very, very open here, yeah. So a lot of people working on 6G now. Okay, so let's uh, briefly, let's see the standard. Okay, so a stand, in my opinion, a standard is determined by bandwidth. Of course, it also de depends on the way and yes, right. People talk about a lot of millimeter wave or, or you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, and so in the 2G, the bandwidth, one two, as I said earlier, 1.23 megahertz. I think this is almost the highest possible bandwidth for non high in single interference channel. This case, a narrow, this is called a narrow band. In the narrow band systems, both TDMA, CDMA all work well, all right? So you don't have to choose CDMA, you don't have to choose CD, TDMA. As I said, this is GSM, this is North America S95. However, if the bandwidth increase to 10 megahertz around or 11 megahertz around, you have a few multipasses. And uh, well, this multipass is actually in the chip level multipasses, six to eight. And I think this is probably the highest possible for CDMA systems because for CDMA systems, you know, and the TDMA, because it's a wireless communication system, so TDMA may not work well because the channel var fades are varying. So the equalization, time domain equalization technique may not work well. Okay, so that's why in 3G, both, system, both European and uh, North America talk, uh, or even Asia talk CDMA. Direct sequence, the DS direct sequence uh, spectrum is used. And because I think that in this case, CDMA still works because you have only a very few six to eight chip level into single interference, multipass, then record receiver actually can work in this case. And there were the, the main loop, the side loops may not be, may not prepare the main loop in this case, all right? Because the CDMA codes are not perfectly orthogonal each other. Well, if you have a chip, if you have delay offset, right? And um, so, however, from 11 megahertz to 20 megahertz, and then you got more multipasses, and you got, the, you know, you got 16 multipasses around, and in this case, actually, CDMA may not work well because you got too many multipasses, and the, the side loops, accumulation of side loops may bury the main loop, okay, because of the orthogonality of the CDMA, CDMA code, code words, and the record receiver may not work well. So that's why this OFDM is adopted for the downlink, and, uh, uh, you know, of course, the time channel channel is varying, and also, uh, yeah, you you need to talk about the classic, right? So, and in this case, actually, the number of subcarriers, 64, 25 data rate overhead is used the SCP to compare to deal with the multipass, right? Cosmic prefix, and 
Then 5G is a hundred megahertz. Of course, you need the OFDM, right? You know, so it's definitely the main approach, motor carrier approach. Okay, so those are the basic standards in the past. All right, so some simple comments in my own, this is my own opinion. Uh, the mod, I'm, I'm talking about the most basic, basic modulation schemes from most physically, okay? So the modulation schemes for all these standards are uh, from so far, so, so far, are determined by the way to deal with interference. interference. Let's go back here. So both actually all here are dealing uh, with interference, interference, multi-passes, right? So, so in my opinion, in our own opinion, multi access, multi sales is not the main problem. Of course, I mean, if you don't, if you don't have to deal with multi access, multi sales, if you have only one point to point, then it's not a problem, right? Any communication is not a problem. The problem is that you have so many users, multi users, right? So you have to share, uh, you have to deal with the, the, you know, the classic is very important. So the, so the, so I, uh, so in that case, anyway, the multi access multi sale is not the main problem to determine which basic modulation is used. And adding more antennas or not is the hardware choice and I may not, in my opinion, may not determine a basic modulation. In my opinion, a basic modulation has to be simple and dealing with uh, multi-pass or multi simple interference is the key, in my own opinion. Okay. Uh, so 60 people talk about much, much more higher than 20 megahertz bandwidth. Can no FDM still work? Okay, once well, then because your bandwidth is much more, then you have much more multi pass exist, right? And then you have much larger CP signal prefix to, to be added uh, to deal with the multi pass. And then in order to have it work, this number of subcarriers, a capital N or size of FFT should be high, should be higher. And when the number of subcarriers is higher, then you have higher peak to average power ratio, PAPR. And uh, whether this is a problem, I don't know whether this will be a problem, for example, right? Okay, people might think about the multi-band OFDM, that uh, was a very earlier thought, uh, was thought about it. In other words, if you have like, like one gigahertz bandwidth, let's say you can cut it, right? You can cut it, for example, in this case, if you have 100 megahertz, you can cut it in 520 megahertz, but this is not bandwidth efficient. Okay, it's not bandwidth efficient. The question is, uh, what kind of bandwidth? Uh, if, 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 if it's a problem will be the break point for FDM in cellular systems. Okay, I'm talking about cellular systems. And how large will our bandwidth go? Can we make it work for fixed N, capital N, number of subcarriers? Or can we use a fixed, with a fixed FFT size, FFT size, and while it still can deal with the increase of number of multipasses, or in other words, increase of bandwidth? Or can we make it scalable to our bandwidth? Okay, so in order to answer this question, I, I, I would like to talk about a single antenna VWF vector FDM, which first appeared in 20, 2000, about 20, 22, 20 years ago, 22 years ago. And uh, okay, so this is uh, what I want to talk about a little bit. Let now. Okay, let's first briefly talk about the FDM. Okay, I, uh, it's a very simple idea. Now, FDM, this is one carrier, then there's uh, seven carriers. And the real FDM is that it's not Cisco's MAM or FDM, right? It's not Cisco's MAM. Cisco has also the same name, real FDM. But that was from that is for MAM or FDM. But from every antenna to every antenna is basically still FDM, all right? It's not that you know. It's it's kind of trivial in terms of the understanding. However, it's not in my setting here. For the real FDM I'm talking about today is not trivial, but for not a single antenna systems. Okay, so this is today's focus. All right, the real FDM idea is very, very simple. So as I said earlier, if the bandwidth is broad, then you have a, that's the problem to cause in the single interference. However, if we cut this wide band, the bandwidth to smaller bandwidths, bands, then of course the in single interference will be small. And for each smaller band is more flat. So maybe it's possible to have ISI free. Or, okay. However, let's go back to the multi carriers now. But if we cut these bands, as I said, the multi-band OFDM, then the bandwidth efficiency is not good. The key for OFDM is that all these bands are overlapped in the analog domain. If you take an analog Fourier transforms of the waveforms, we are overlapping the subbands. Okay. So then the question, how can we separate these subbands at yeah, the receiver? That's the cool thing for OFDM. Because in the, it's a digital, in the receiver, we're doing digital processing. In the digital processing domain, we're orthogonal. 
okay? For having the analog domain, we are not orthogonal. You cannot separate them in the analog domain, but with the digital domain, you can. Uh, we, we are able to separate those, those subchannels. And each subchannel is narrow, therefore it's flat. So you don't have that side. Okay. And uh, the key is that you need to add, you know, you know for, for, for game end, you need to add some CP, right? Okay, so this is the block, simple block diagram. If you have data x of n here, you you know you do uh, you you put a uh, group a vector a uh, group of n symbols and you do n point IFP, then you add a cyclic prefix, then you become a serial serial and transmit. Then you got a simple defense channel here, and then you get an additive noise at the receiver side. You remove CP and pair, you know you convert it to a parallel to a serial to parallel. Then you do n point IFP back. Etc. Okay, so this is the simple block diagram for uh, the conventional for FDM. And mathematically, this is the formula here. You get a capital N symbols to transmit. Then after the IFFT, endpoint IFFT, you got a, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the time domain, you got this, this is for you domain, you got, you know, you got a time domain, and capital N symbols, you got a CP here, capital gamma, uh, minus one, you got eight capital gamma symbols uh, painting here, and then you got, then you can convert it into a sequence. Serial. Then you transmit into you know. Then you got a linear in the linear LTI system, the interesting interference system, which is a linear convolution. Okay. And uh, after the linear convolution, after the channel here, and uh, if if the CP length here gamma is more than or equal to capital L, capital L is the number of multipasses minus one. Right. Let's say. Okay. Then at the receiver at the, after the lean channel, let's say you have two blocks of information to transmit. And this is the block ahead, this is the block afterward. These two blocks will overlap each other after going through the channel. So this is the block overlapping length, okay, for the two blocks of information. Yeah, now, because when this uh, CP length gamma is more than or equal to capital L, and you, after this is removed, after overlappings between the two blocks of information is removed, then uh, what's left for the two blocks is that this is a linear convolution, the whole thing is linear convolution, the whole thing is linear convolution. And it's interesting, this part, the, the, the part remained is the cyclic convolution. And this is also the cyclic convolution. So then we see side after this part is removed, and then you, uh, you know, you, because this is both are cyclic convolution, so you can do FF, uh, you know, endpoint FFT, then this cyclic convolution becomes a product in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the frequency domain. Okay, so then you got a capital N subchannel. These are the capital N subchannels, and each channel coefficient is the case, the case subchannel, the case EFT value of the channel, uh, time domain channel coefficients. So that's it, right? So then the original intersymbol interference channel is converted to capital N intersymbol interference free subchannels. And uh, so this is the cool part. Okay, mathematically here. This is the original in the same interference channel with capital L plus one some terms here. And uh, you know, after you 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 probably add the cyclic prefix, uh, one gamma cyclic prefix length is more not smaller than capital L. And uh, as I said uh, introduced earlier, then you know you, if you follow that steps, you get this capital N into simple interference free channel. You don't have, for every channel sub channel here, you don't have into simple interference because they got only single single symbol here, right? So and uh, then you can do the demodulation, right? Of course, some of the coefficients here are small. Then you, for the small values of the channel coefficient, in the frequency domain, you can cut them. You don't use them, right, for example. OK, so this is uh, for S95, uh, no, for, for LTE, and for also for, for Wi-Fi, OK, 11A. All right, so in my opinion, what's the key, most important part in, in for FDM? Actually, what I, said, what I said earlier is that when the number of subcarriers is fixed, however, when the number of subcarriers is large, the CP actually can be kind of man negligible. And if you uh, even run the add CP for when any capital N is large, you, know, you, you cannot get the idea or you know, identity for in the, in the focus of the domain. However, you can get roughly get this, right? That's why the first paper, I think, in wireless applications. Uh, the PEP didn't propose ACP, I guess. And then what, what really the matter, what really matters, okay, for OFDM? It might be very interesting. In my opinion is that, you know, OFDM converts less finite constellation 
parts, for example, BPSK, QPSK to more level amplitudes and phases. For example, BPSK uh, is, con uh, is converted in the, in, the, in the frequency domain to many, many level uh, spread, uh, single, const single constellation. And the, the larger capital N, the larger number of carriers, the more constellation points. In other words, the OFDM actually converts time spread in the time domain to value spread, in my opinion. These values are spread, okay, in the transmission. And another problem, the another but one problem for this is that you have higher peak to power average ratio. Here, PR is, uh, no, is N, capital N, because when all the signals is the same, then you got a capital N squared power, right? So the PAPR is a capital N. Of course, this is less likely to occur, but, but still, you know, uh, still PAPR is a problem when the capital N is not small. Okay, so this thing, in my opinion, this is the key for OFDM. Converts time spread, uh, like time spread here, let's see. Oops, let's go back, sorry. Now, this is called a time spread, right? Convert this time spread to the value spread, value spread uh, in the transmission. The value spread, this is what you transmit in the time domain, capital XK. This is after IFFT, endpoint IFFT, okay? All right, so now let's kind of talk about the vector WFDM. It's, uh, what, what is the vector WFDM? So this is the WFDM, conventional WFDM I talked about earlier. And uh, then the vector WFDM concept is really, really simple. You replace every scalar, every scalar here for the same information symbol by a vector of information symbols, okay? The first one is they not converted to change it to a vector here. This one is also changed to a vector here. And the vector size, let's say vector size is capital M, all right? And then you do point-wise endpoint IFFT, the same as before for every for let, let's say take the first component of this factor, first component of this factor, take all first components of these capital N vectors and do endpoint IFFT. Then you got to all the components and you get another capital N many vectors in the in the time domain. And then you uh, you add C P here. Okay, add C P here. And uh, with in terms of these vectors, and this, uh, you know, the, the CP lines is actually, you know, let's say CP lines. Is, this is the original channel lines. CP lines you uh, you add is actually has uh, has to be only, what is it, not smaller than this ratio. In other words, the lines this gamma two that is m times smaller than capital L, right? So as long as this is satisfied, then you can convert the original in single interference channel to capital N many vector subchannels. Now we're going to see this in more details, okay? So for every sub K in the time frequency domain, we get a vector channel. A vector size here is M by one. This is M by one, M by one, and this is M by M matrix. So the channel is vectorized. And this is a simple way to think about those OTFS, orthogonal time frequency space modulation scheme. This is a hot topic, this literally. And in, in fact, this is, I think, is a simple way to understand the transmission. Although, you know, because of the OTFS, in OTFS, people talk about the time varying channel. The time varying channel is it's complicated. Notation wise, it's complicated. However, in the, if you only consider in the transmission side, actually, it's simple. Okay. When you, of course, you need to, uh, yeah, you need to, uh, uh, so let's say that the, the uh, let's try to move this. You can add a P you now here, you know, this in the block diagram here. I don't, I don't, I didn't add the C uh, pulse here, right? You, you, you know, if you can simply add the pulse similar to WFDM here, when we talk about a WFDM here, we don't consider pulse here, right? So everything is digital. Here, the same, everything digital. You can certainly add a pulse to like, like what the OTFS does, and you can add uh, whatever pulses you want, okay? And, and uh, also the CP lines. The CP lines here do not have to be multiple of vectors. Okay, as long as the CP lines here total, this this con, this whole sequence, you convert these vectors to sequential to CP, uh, sequence here. As long as this line sequence is longer than capital L, you can truncate it. You can truncate it. So this this part do not have to be multiple of uh, vector size. Okay, so that's what I want to say in the second bullet. Again, the transmission of VFDM is exactly the same as that of OTFS. The OTFS is here, the first paper here, right? So some of you may know. And uh, okay. 
uh, if you don't consider post, okay, in simple way. All right, so let's see the vectorized channel in more details. Now this is the vectorized channel. For each vector channel, actually, uh, this vector, the case, uh, ta frequent domain vector, this is the information vector. In this information vector, actually, we have a capital M symbols, uh, information symbols, and this capital M information symbols are interfered. Yes, in the simple interfere in each vector channel, right? And this vector, uh, vector, vectorized channel, uh, this is it's evaluated, it's called a DFT test, DFT of the polyphase matrix, a uh, vectorized polyphase matrix of the original channel, original channel vector here, uh, the original channel H of N, H of Z, original channel H of Z, and H of Z is the vectorized equivalently to this M by M vectorized channel. And each component here is called the, the M polyphase component. You just pick up the, you know, sub channel, okay, in the time domain. You could evenly split, evenly split the time domain into capital M e polyspaced subsequences. Okay, it's called the M polyphase component of H of Z. And clearly the order of this um, polynomial matrix, the order of this polynomial matrix is, is here. Is the L to the prime, which is equal to L divided by M take a law. Okay, well, let's see an example very simply. And you see this matrix also called a pseudo circulant, right? Without this Z minus one, it's circulant. With uh, and the only difference with circulant matrix, we've got a Z minus one order component here. It's called a pseudo circulant matrix. matrix. Okay, let's see a very simple example. Let's assume this uh, SI channel it has this form. And uh, let's uh, consider you know vector vector size two and uh, capital M is two. So then this this uh, uh, may polynomial is split into two sub um, polynomials uh, so into two polyphase components. And the first one is the even order, even coefficients, and the second one is all other coefficients. Very simple. But each one has order less than right. So they're basically half of the original order. And in this case, actually the length of the matrix. Uh, channel is three is uh, five divided by two here, all right. So this is the sort of circulant matrix, so vectorized channel matrix, and which uh, by putting these two into here, you get this simple this one. Okay. Then uh, this is uh, you know this is the one we talked about. You know, so this is the vectorized channel matrix, and the order here is roughly uh, uh, L divided by M. Okay, roughly L divided by M here. So it's basically. The, the, chan the channel lines of vectorized channel lines is uh, shrinked, is shrink by, by capital M times. Okay, so now let's, uh, why VUFDM is good or why, why would UTFS is good for channels with the Doppler shift, the Doppler spread. So this is the reason, this slide is dense, the slide unfortunately, but uh, actually it's uh, clear. So, so the, this sort of sequence matrix, this sort of circulant matrix can be diagonalized similar to sort of similar to circulant matrix, right? Circulant matrix can be diagonalized by the M, M point DFT matrix. Okay. Circular matrix can be diagonalized by DFT matrix here. But for pseudo circulant matrix, you need to add a little bit a shift called the you know, phase shift matrix to this to diagonalize the pseudo circulant matrix. Okay. So this pseudo circulant matrix is diagonalized with this form. With a common, not not very right common, but you got this one, unitary matrix here, and this WN is a DFT M point, uh, M point DFT matrix. Then you got this uh, unit diagonal, so the unitary matrix, shift surface shift matrix, and this is diagonal coffee, uh, diagonal matrix of the channel matrix, and each one is actually sees the kind of DFT value. All right. So and here is the, the WM is this M point, uh, you know, root of unity. And this, you know, this basically is the evaluation of the pseudo signal matrix at the case frequency, DF, the discrete frequency. Okay, and uh, this is the diagonal matrix. You know, this is the matrix diagonalized pseudo signal matrix. And uh, yeah, this is the for the channel vectorized channel matrix. However, at the receiver side, you know, this received vector equivalent received vector can be written in this form. So let's go back here. So this channel. Can be equivalently written as this for this for, okay. And then you got a diagonal channel here, and you got this uh, called the you know this part this part 
This this part is called pre equivalent pre coding to the information. This line is not aligned where I'm uh, somehow, but so this this whole thing is what you know equivalent to transmission, and which is equivalent to pre coded information symbol. This is a kind of diagonal space time code, if you wish. So this frequency domain part is similar to the channel in time domain for single antenna systems or diagonal space time coded MIMO systems for MIMO systems, okay? And this part is similar to the pre-coding to achieve if the single antenna system called the signal space velocity for time varying channels or the, for multiple antenna systems called the diagonal space time block coding to achieve a spatial velocity, okay? So one channel varies with Doppler spread, it can collect both multipath velocity and signal and all signal space velocity. So this is the, exactly the reason why uh, VUFDM or UTFS is good to both time vary time spread and Doppler spread. And uh, we're going to see that even with the MMNC receiver at the receiver side for this well, for the system, you still be able to achieve multipath velocity or, or special uh, signal spread velocity. Okay, even when we do a linear receiver for this system here, for this vectorized system, all right? Okay, so to come back again more here. In fact, uh, VUFDM and OTFS are equivalent if the channel is stationary, uh, both, not only for receiver transmitter, but also for the receiver side. So in other words, VUFDM and OTFS are uh, completely the same for stationary channels, and uh, actually two papers already talked about that earlier. Oh, because the transmission is exactly the same. It's very simple to see that transmission also exactly the same because this time very as for stationary channel, if the channel is stationary, but arbitrary, right? If the channel is arbitrary, then just set up the channel delta, at, you know, delta channel, no SI, it's a special case of a stationary channel, that means that all the transmission, post transmission is exactly the same. In other words, the, view, the transmission of VUFDM and uh, OTFS are exactly the same. Okay, so this is what I'm wanting to say here. And the transmitter signals of OTFS and VUFDM the same in either discrete time sequence or continuous time waveform. You just add a pause to that. Okay, is there no, no difference? And also in my book, also we st I studied the VUFDM for time varying channels as well. Okay, I mean, time varying channels. Is this more broad, in my opinion, broad, and you know, okay, includes the, the channels with Doppler shift, Doppler spread, right? There are some other names later in the literature. Literature is called one is called OSDM, another one is called AOFDM or Cauchy's OFDMA, etc. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so when the vector size is one, in other words, you know, it's not a vector, then the VOFDM is the same as OFDM. It's, it's back to OFDM, right? That's clear. When, uh, kept, when the vector size is more than over the, you know, more than the channel length, and the FFT size is one, capital N is one. In this case, actually, VUFDM is the same as <laughs> the single carrier frame with a frame with a maple length. So this is the uplink for LTE. And in this case, actually, you don't have to do any FFT. So therefore, the, you know, therefore, the, 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 the pick to have PAPR is low, right? This is the time domain approach. Okay, uh, but you do everything at the receiver. And so therefore, VUFDM is a bridge between UFDM and the single carrier for, for the main All right, and uh, clearly the ML receiver complexity is also in the middle. Because, you know, for when we talk about ML receiver, for each vectorized channel, it's, 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 a, you know, it's more complex than, than you know, when, when the vector size is higher, it's more complex, right? So in other words, let's, let me summarize here. So this is a time domain single carrier approach of equalization. So the maximum of symbols interfere each other is SI, yeah, you know, all together, right? So this is a single carrier, uh, this is a multi-carrier in focus domain, this is in time domain, this is a focus domain, the WFDM. Then, you know, you have no inter-symbol interference, okay? And the VUFDM is in the middle. All right, so you can choose the number of uh, symbols interfere each other is the vector size. If the vector size M is less or not more than capital M, not more than longer than the uh, channel length. Okay, you can choose two, you can choose three, etc. So it's really flexible. Okay, and uh, in any sense, anyway, aspect single carrier OFDM, I mean single antenna VOFDM is in the middle between single carrier and the OFD multi carrier to deal with the interference. 
Okay, the secret prefix, you want the secret prefix is the uh, ratio is fixed, FFT size can, uh, I'm sorry, when the FFT size is fixed and the cyclic prefix overhead, right, you can be reduced by capital times. When the cyclic prefix rate overhead is fixed, then you can reduce the FFT size by capital M times. That's very simple. And in this case, you can reduce PAPR. Okay. And uh, I don't know how much time I have, but uh, you can, because this is a vectorized system, you can do matrix modulation for the, the, the transmission side. Uh, that's another good thing. You know? well, however, you have to consider two OFDM symbols together. Right. So then, uh, okay, then you can do, if you can do that, you can do my matrix modulation. And uh, for example, in the two vector two sizes, and this is the 16 up to so far the best now, 16 unitary matrices. Okay, 16 best norm, you two by two unitary matrices, you can do modulation. And, we, and uh, so far, and I did, we did some, you know, they, this uh, the simple test is what UVB system. In this case, actually, the uh, size 2048. And uh, so this is a single OFDM, this is a, this is a VOFDM. Uh, okay, so actually the performance is better. However, the decoding complexity is higher because we are doing my two, two symbol, two symbol in the vector channel, decoding together. If you do this uh, matrix uh, modulation, this is matrix modulation, this is without matrix modulation. Uh, okay, oh, this is OFDM actually. This is OFDM, this is matrix modulation. After matrix modulation, they be OFDM. This is coherent, this is non-coherent. You can do non-coherent detection, all right? So you can clearly see the, the performance improvement with, with the matrix modulation, etc. And you can, uh, you can do linear receiver, uh, because each 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 is vectorized channel is linear system, a linear channel. So you can do zero force receiver, you can do MMS receiver. And interestingly, the, the performances of a two are different. So there is a if the low is the one noise power, when the SNR goes to uh, infinity, the the the, the, the decoding gate, the modulation detection gate and again, this is MMC decode the modulation gate, this is zero form decoding gate. Actually, they don't, they don't approach zero, they approach to a constant. I'm sorry, to non-zero constant, but the ratio goes to one. Okay, so this makes actually the the reason why MMC can achieve reversity and the zero zero forcing receiver does not achieve reversity. And uh, uh, okay, I'm not going. To, I'm not going to see that. Also, the gain gap here, the SN gap is independent of M. Interestingly, the same is uh, the 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 matrix. The, the matrix channel deleted by one uh, column, okay? And uh, the gap actually is, uh, is, uh, increases with the vector size and the channel length, all right? And in the, you know, it's in, independent of small n. And you can see the gap, you know, this is the gap between the, uh, the detection gains, S and again, uh, no, between MMC and zero forcing. Increase with M, increase with the length, uh, L. All right, or D. All right, so I'm not going to talk about this in details. And this is the called the diversity uh, gain. So this is the defining of the diversity order. And uh, for the MMC receiver, linear receiver, we can, uh, this is the formula uh, we, we proved so that we can achieve some multi-pass diversity. Well, this is the channel length, okay? So this is the rate. This M is the vector size. In, see this uh, one, in, in general cases, it's depending on the M, when M is large, you can have maybe more diversity order. When channel length is high, you can have more diversity order, et cetera. And the zero forcing for zero forcing receiver, you don't achieve diversity order, okay? I I have some of the last simulations, but I want, uh, want to show that this is a proved theory, right? Yeah, justified theory. So, uh, or illustrate the theory. I'm not going to talk about that too much because I don't have too much. Uh, so this is obviously order one, this is obviously order two. For this case, you know, I got red is fixed, capital M vector size is fixed, but the channel lines is varying. But this is also from the formula here. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, this is for also from the formula, center of the obviously order three, and then the obviously order one here. Okay, so, but anyway, all the simulations follow the same, exactly the same as the formula we proved. Okay, and uh, this MMS receiver here, uh, all right, also we did some uh, maximum likelihood, I think, uh, performance. Uh, okay. Okay, so now let's talk about multiple antenna systems. So uh, for the conventional OFDM, I'm OFDM, 
And actually, you can do a very simple way to it's called cyclic diversity to, to collect both multipath diversity and spatial diversity. The, 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 the method I guess is simple, you just shift in the time domain, you shift cyclically for every WFDM symbols, you do cyclic shift apart from a part of the capital L symbols. And but the idea is that put all these uh, fadings, multipasses from multiple antennas to a single line, single line equivalent to single input, single output, okay, to achieve the multipass diversity. If all of these passes, all the coefficients into a single line, no overlaps, then you can, uh, what can you can achieve? What's the multipass diversity total you can achieve? Is n t times capital L, okay? You know, you can, if you can put those things in a single line, in a single line of OFDM symbol, as long, in other words, if you can do this capital N, the number of subcarriers is more than this number, you can achieve both, you can achieve both multi-pass diversity and multi, multi, and the multi attendant diversity or spatial diversity. The condition is that capital N has to be more than or equal to, cannot be smaller than this product. However, if you have the number of antennas is large, or if the bandwidth is large, this capital N will be large, very large, okay? And the question can, can we reduce it, right? So let's say if bandwidth, when we talk about all gigahertz bandwidth, this L will be huge. Then this capital N will be huge. Okay, so that's probably not good in practice. The question is if we can do a scalable thing. Okay, that's a good thing about VOFDM. So we do, do the same thing, vectorize the channel, we just try to put to the cyclic, called the cyclic diversity, delta diversity, VOFDM, try the same idea to the cyclic shift in the, in the, in the time domain, for each, uh, you know, for each, for each antenna, then try to put all these uh, vectorized channels from multiple antennas into a single line, no overlaps. Okay, as long as the capital N is more than not smaller than N T multiplied by capital L divided by M vector size, we can collect the order of the multiple diversity and multi and special of the multi antenna of the special of the city. The good thing is that this capital N. You know, this requirement is reduced by capital M times. Think about your vector size 10, then you can, you know, the capital N can save 10 times smaller, okay? And the, but the important thing is that this capital N can be scalable to the bandwidth, to L or, you know, you see? So this, it, it you know, just increased the vector size, okay? All right, so let me try to conclude. So that, we will have the um, you know, uh, good thing is that if, if the dead, cyclic data rate uh, overhead is fixed, then you can reduce the FFT size. If the FFT size is fixed, you can reduce the CP data rate overhead. All right. And it's a trade off in any aspect. We will have the um, is a trade off between receiver complexity, performance, PAPR, CP data rate overhead for a nice side channel. And it's, it's in the middle between single carrier and the way of, uh, Multi carrier system to deal with that side and the both good for both good for channels with both time and Doppler space as I explained later and the transmitter signals of OTFS and the VFDM are identical all right uh, also VFDM was studied over time variant channels in my book we had a, a, a section talk about this in my uh, 20 year, 22 year old book and then if you have multiple antennas CDD, cyclic delay diversity, VFDM can be applied to for multiple antennas simply to simply collect both special and multi path of cities. And uh, so it's scalable to a kind of bandwidth. Okay, in my opinion, wireless communications can be categorized into four cases. First is narrow band. In this case, like 2G, both TDM and CDM work very well. Then the media, you know, like um, low or more wideband CDMA, like 3G, the 11 megahertz bandwidth or 10 megahertz bandwidth. Okay, then you have wide bandwidth, wide band WFDM, like 4G, 5G, let's say 40, 20 megahertz, 100 megahertz. Then you have high band, high wide band uh, uh, channel, like let's say 500 megahertz or even more. Then I, I think, you know, VWFDM is scalable to bandwidth. Maybe a good chance, all right? I think, all VWF, all TFS. Let's forget about time value for a second, the, the Doppler shift for a second, right? Because it's scalable to bandwidth. And just increase the, 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 the increase the vector size, all the time, you know, okay? 
time uh, window, right? A little bit. All right, capital M time. Okay, so I think it's a good chance to good 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 buy uh, trade off to be able to scalable to uh, to bandwidth. And again, back to my favorable slide. In my opinion, the last forty or fifty years, the most important subject, in my own opinion, in physical layer, basically physical layer communications. And let's forget about antenna design, etc. That's, uh, that's that's uh, that's that's uh, of course physical layer. In my opinion, this uh, is a physical layer communication to mainly deal with interesting interference, no matter in wireline or wireless. Back 40 years or 30 years in the middle, right? More computer modem, the telnet, high speed modem, ethernet, and the Wi Fi now, and the cellular systems 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G. All of them, the modulation is try to deal with the simple interference. And the VOFDM is exactly designed to flexibly deal with inter-symbol interference. I think it's a very good candidate or something to think about it. You can choose arbitrarily how much level in simple interference uh, occur by choosing the vector size, two or three arbitrarily, up to you, all right? Okay, well, here are some reference related topics. The most recent one is I have a comment uh, just published last December in transaction wireless communication system communications, and uh, thank you so much. Oh, I think that's all my talk. Let me let me oh, let, let me try to stop. Any questions? Um, thank you, Dr. Share, for your talk. I have one question. Yes. What's the advantage of matrix modulation? Uh, matrix modulation to try to get a more special velocity if you have multiple antennas. Okay. And then you don't have to do that. You can do CDD to collect more, you know, in theory. You can collect special velocity. Okay. Uh, also, I have another question. Um, have yes, you yes. ever investigated the um, the bit error, bit error rate performance of the or yeah, 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 we did, we did, we did some, uh, yeah, for even for, uh, yeah, we did, we did some, yeah, yeah, in the, in the uh, early papers. Yeah, but have you compared it to OTFS? How, how does the bit error rate performance compare? It's, 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 a, it's, it's a better little, you know, you can, you can achieve some special of the city, and a multi pass of the city. If you, for, if for single antenna systems, if the channel varies, and then we can achieve a special of the multi pass of the city. Okay. Okay, thank you. Sure. Even with the MFC receiver, even with the MMSC receiver. So the reason all the formula, that's the theory. Right. Um, so is there any other questions from the audience? Um, uh uh, I have uh, one question. Uh, can we uh, can we uh, get the recording uh, of the like of this uh, class uh, through email or something? Sure, like, sure, no problem. Of course. Okay. Yes, I can send it out afterwards. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it's a down. It's a down. So, okay. Um, uh, I have one quick question. Yes. Hi, this is uh, Mike Buer. Uh, thank you very much for your. Let me let me stop sharing. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you very Bye. much for your uh, for your very interesting talk and for taking the time out to uh, to present this to us. Sure, um, thank you. I, I, you're absolutely right that I, ISI has been the dominating uh, factor uh, in what's been driving modulation and system design for the last uh, I would say maybe thirty years. Yes. Yes. Uh, it's always been pushing higher and higher data rate. And once you right. once you push higher data rate, it's higher bandwidth and, and ISI. Right. Um, so one inter one question that I had was, uh, you made a comment during your talk that for the receiver structures you were looking at, yes, that, uh, you had this interesting result that the zero forcer that MMSC does not converge to zero forcing for infinite yeah. SNR. Right. And that they had different diversity orders. Yeah, so that's very interesting. Yeah, I was curious about that. Is it in, does it come from the way it's formulated, the way the problem's formulated, or what causes that in, in, in 
an equivalency to occur? Yeah, that's uh, I think that because of the MMZ formulation, the MMZ receiver formulation, the channel, mm. you know, varying. It's it's after averaging, right? The channel. I see, but it does does in the zero forcing. Are you trying to force all the um, uh, the ISI or all the multi path to zero? No, this is just, just, just no. This is just the yeah, yeah. I mean, just we invert the channel brute force by zero zero force formula. I see. Okay, and MMSE isn't isn't attempting to do the exact same thing while balancing noise. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you, you, because it's regularized, right? I say now that the only thing you need to know is the noise signal translation. Okay. All right. Okay. It turns out that you know it, it matters. I see. I, I was see. surprised too. I think that, you know many years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very interesting. Uh, and and so, uh, have you been investigating OTFS in in the meantime? Now that you've you've seen, well, yeah, because the, the I think the because the transmission is exactly the same. Yeah. So I mean, uh, of course, the channel can vary with the time, right? Sure. I sure. mean, well, I don't know, I don't know what uh, <laughs> I don't know what I mean. Uh, the transmission is exactly the same. What I can tell, I mean, I, uh, we did the VFM for twenty years. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much. Sure, you're welcome. Thank you. So thank you, Shangjin. Uh, I will have to actually leave now for another minute. Okay, okay. Nice thank you, you very, very much for coming to the seminar. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me. It's my great pleasure. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. All right then, bye-bye. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye-bye.